In this channel, we say that we are the last humans on earth. We're the last generation of humans on earth. Okay, we're going to all die very soon. Uh, can't tell you how many months, how many years. I can only have a sense of that. And people say, Bill, are you a prophet? Uh, have you seen the future? <laughs> Uh, have you had a, a bad dream or you know, are you in touch with God or something like that? No, no, it's got to do with theory, with explanation. That's what we do here, science. Science is what? Rational explanations. We have to explain how extinctions happen. And no one in the last 10,000 years, since at least since the days of Doris Cuvier in uh, France, you know, who came up with paleontology, not a single paleontologist on earth can tell you how species become extinct. They can't tell you how the dinosaurs became extinct, how the synapses became extinct, how the, uh, how plants become extinct. They, they have no idea whatsoever. And they've been, uh, for the last 200 years, they've been twiddling around with the same theories over and over and over and they can't hit it because they're looking for catastrophes uh, for mass extinction. For um, background extinctions, they have a different mechanism. Man killed everybody. <laughs> we killed the Neanderthals, we killed the Woolies, we killed the, the Dodos, we killed the uh, Passenger Pit, we killed them all, the Great Auk, we, we killed them all. We're responsible, we're the murderers. And that's all they have. Okay? So they have no explanation for background or mass extinctions. So what we do here, we try to set them straight and show them how extinction happens. Okay. So there were a couple of uh, papers, uh, I think in the last week, here's the first one, it says uh, Life Science, uh, North Dakota fossil site reveals when asteroid killed dinosaurs. Uh -huh. so, so they are able to determine, you know, when uh, the asteroid killed the dinosaur. They know it was an asteroid. That's been proven beyond doubt, right? So, um, okay, so they say they uh, went in there and looked at some spherules. And they say, look, we found them in the mouths or in the stomachs of some fish that were there, okay, that they found the skeletons over there in, in North Dakota. Uh, it turns out that if you looked at, look at where, you know, where um, these, um, where, where the asteroid hit, which was in the Yucatan, you know, uh, south of the Gulf of Mexico, right? And you wonder how those spherules made it all the way to North Dakota, okay? And uh, this is one of the questions you should keep in mind. But this is what they're saying. They've already proven that the asteroid killed the dinosaurs. Now they're looking for, I don't know, for some evidence of different kinds to be able to write their papers, I guess. That's all. They're just trying to become famous or something. Say, oh, we discovered this or we discovered that. So, yeah, we, we don't pay attention to all the asteroiders okay, who say that they've discovered how uh, the dinosaurs died. Okay. And uh, you saw just now, that was brimstone. Uh, they have another version, uh, because remember when the asteroid hit the water, it created all these tsunamis, and you have this. <laughs> you have all these, uh, this water world, you know, and the water spilled over the land and just uh, overwhelmed everything. It just uh, covered the land with water, uh, drowned out all the trees, all the dinosaurs, and I would assume even the tiny little mammals that were, you know, in the, waiting in the wings for the dinosaurs to die. Uh, so I don't know how they survived uh, this, but yeah, they have all this stuff. They, they want to make sure that you understand that, they, that uh, the asteroid killed everything, you know, everywhere on Earth. Uh, nothing survived. And so the question is, you know, how come we're here? Did God create Adam and Eve all over again? Or how did that happen? I mean, they create the animals, the everything all over again? You know, so, uh, you know, you got to have some questions about these people who claim that the asteroid uh, theory is correct, okay, and that you cannot dispute it, okay. So here, um, here we have another version, and uh, this is the uh, uh, other article that came out, says uh, that uh, they cannot agree on whether it was the asteroid or volcanism. You know, the Deccan traps in India, they spewed lava for millions of years, I guess, you know, and they swamped the land with lava. And so either the asteroid killed us or, or the Deccan traps killed us. And uh, 
uh, a lot of people favored the Deccan traps because it was a slower process, whereas the other one was catastrophic. It happened, you know, now and, you know, it was, that was it, okay? You know, it's like happened real quick. And a lot of people, especially paleontologists, have problems with that because they say, look, you know, we can see in the record that the die-off was slow towards the end of the Cretaceous. You know, it wasn't like today, you know, it was like several million years you had species disappearing gradually and then suddenly, you know, they were, you know, suddenly they, they were gone. And so they say, no, no, it was the volcanoes, you know, they speed lava slowly and they change the atmosphere and all that stuff and eventually killed all the animals. So you have these two versions. These are the two primary versions, by the way, okay? So this is what the fight is about. And there you see it. Uh, uh, they, they have this tug of war between them, between the uh, asteroiders, okay, the impactors, and the Vulcan, uh, Vulcans, <laughs> okay? So this is the fight, okay? And um, just in case, we had, uh, as always in mathematics, you have proof. Fortunately, we have, what would we do without proof, without evidence, right? And here we have a, a paper that was written in 2010. 41 people signed it. All these scientists, scientists. And what do they do? They confirm that the Chicxulub impact uh, triggered the mass extinction, period. We're done. We proved it. No more discussion. Okay, so these, this is the official version now. And some people don't like it, especially the volcanists, you know, the people who, uh, I guess, they, they uh, watch uh, Star Trek or something, I don't know. And here they are, uh, here's um, the two primary exponents of, um, of each one of the theories. One was uh, the Alvarez father and son team, Louis and uh, Walter Alvarez. Uh, they were involved in, in discovering the iridium that, you know, the uh, asteroid spread throughout the planet. And that's on the one hand. And on the other, you have uh, Dewey McLean. And he was a fellow who, said, who wrote a paper, in fact, two years earlier before the Alvarez, uh, where he discussed um, that the Deccan traps probably created the uh, demise of the dinosaurs. So here you have, this is about between... Uh, Alvarez and McLean, uh, Dewey on the left and uh, and uh, Louis on the right. <laughs> so we have Dewey against Louis. Okay. So, and what happened was since uh, Alvarez, um, he, he had a Nobel Prize in physics, in physics, <laughs> uh, in mathematics. Uh, you know, it's important to know that the, that little bit of detail. Okay. Alvarez was in the Great Artiste, the airplane that followed the airplane that threw the bomb over, I think, uh, over Hiroshima, okay? And he was in that plane uh, to try to find out, you know, to measure uh, what the explosion, you know, how many people killed, all that kind of good stuff. And he was a guy who worked for the military. He worked in, um, in Alamos, uh, in, in the, uh, what is it, the, um, where they developed the bomb. And he was into radars, and because of his radar work, you know, the military and other people, uh, friends, you know, they got him a Nobel Prize because of all that. Okay, again, technology, nothing to do with science, okay, especially he's a quantum mechanic, okay, so he couldn't have been a scientist. But it turns out that once he had that Nobel Prize, now he's got a little bit of uh, authority, and he went in there and helped his son, who was a geologist, okay. And uh, so he put his weight behind the paper in 1980, and he got it published. And since then, it's become the law. You know, uh, the way the dinosaurs died was because of that asteroid strike. And nobody can take it back now. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> okay, take it or leave it, or take it or take it. You know, that's it. Okay, so we have this uh, this bout between McLean, and they went to uh, McLean went uh, to a conference together with Alvarez. And Alvarez trounced him. Trounced him not because he, he was right or because of anything, and just because he had more authority and he was able to convince all the mathematicians that he was right and that Dewey was wrong. So Louis won against Dewey, okay? And in fact, he embarrassed them. He, uh, he treated them quite roughly, <laughs> okay? So uh, poor old Dewey, he, he found out the hard way how science really works, you know? Political science. <laughs> 
Okay, so here we have uh, the Alvarez hypothesis. Okay, let's go with him because uh, I, I want to cover this because really whether you use the volcanism, you know, Deccan traps, or you use um, asteroid, the the idea is that uh, you know the changes were so drastic. One was fast, the other one was slow, but the the uh, uh, changes affected our atmosphere, the air we breathe, the waters, uh, everything, and so. You would think it kills all animals or, you know, and, and it, it doesn't answer the primary question that extinction must answer always. OK, if you did not answer this issue, you do not know anything about extinction. Okay? it's just that simple. And the issue is selectivity. OK, if you cannot explain selectivity, if your theory does not explain selectivity, you do not have a theory. OK. And, uh, and this is the problem. The problem is that, you know, volcanoes and uh, especially asteroids, they're not intelligent enough to be able to discern between, especially, you know, in a chronological way, between the old species and the new species. And what always, always dies in a mass extinction, also in a background extinction, by the way, uh, are the old species. So that's a common thread. You can put my, my hand in the fire for that. <laughs> okay. So here it is. This is the Alvarez hypothesis. And this is uh, his uh, paper that he published in 1980. This is his famous paper. Okay. I just want to show you. He talked about extraterrestrial impact, iridium, right? Uh, he says uh, iridium can only come in, in such quantities from an asteroid strike. And so he goes in there, he says, a hypothesis suggested, which what accounts for the extinctions and the iridium observations. Impact of a large earth crossing asteroid would inject about 60 times the object's mass into the atmosphere as pulverized rock. So he goes on in his paper talking about uh, math, because that's all he knows how to talk about. Okay, so he goes in there, does a lot of numbers for us, how much it weighed, how big it was, uh, you know, uh, what, how fast it was traveling, all that kind of nonsense. And with that, he says, I've explained extinction of the dinosaurs, right? Uh, no, I'm sorry, Louis. I, I don't think you did. Okay, all you did was give me a bunch of numbers, worthless numbers that uh, do not tell me the mechanism of how the dinosaurs disappeared. And here, let me show you the outline of his paper, just so you see where I'm coming from on all this. Um, those are the titles, uh, or you could say the headlines of each one of the groups, uh, you know, of, of, of his whole paper, right? And, and they're all numbers. They're all, he, he just goes into with evidence and numbers and equations. That's all he does, right? And the only one that's of interest to science is the one that says biological effects. He's got only five paragraphs under biological effects. The sh probably one of the shortest part of his paper, okay? And uh, I just put the first two of them there, uh, not the other three because they're even less relevant than these two, but it says a temporary absence of sunlight would effectively shut off photosynthesis and thus attack food chains at their origins. Okay, yeah, okay, I don't know about that. It says terrestrial vertebrates did survive. They may have been able to do this by feeding on insects and decaying vegetation. In other words, detritus. Okay, okay. So this is uh, this is all he says essentially uh, about the mechanisms. But I like his last statement, his last paragraph better. And here it is. <laughs> this one's even better. Uh, so if you read his paper, you'll see this. And it says, "We will not go further into this matter, meaning of explaining the mechanisms of how the dinosaurs disappeared, right? But we refer the reader to the proceedings of the 1976 Ottawa meeting on the CT extinction." This volume reproduces an extensive discussion among the participants of what would happen if the sunlight were temporarily turned off. Those involved in the discussion seem to agree that many aspects of the extinction pattern could be explained by this mechanism, although a number of puzzles remained. So he says, if you want to know the mechanism, you got to go to Ottawa, 1976. You know, maybe, um, uh, what is it, uh, time travel? Go back there and find out what it was all about. He doesn't say anything in his paper about the mechanism of how the dinosaur died, how that asteroid actually created the death of the animals. He just said, look, it turned out the sunlight, you know, there was no more sun, 
and all animals die, but the mammals remain because they ate the trees. That's all he says. And, you know, it turns out that he wasn't the first, you know, to come up with uh, a lot of these uh, theories because, you know, you had the Laubenfels, uh, what was it, 1956, he wrote a paper already said, hey, extraterrestrial impact. You know, so, so uh, Alvarez copied it from the Lobenfels. But it turns out the Lobenfels wasn't the first one either. If you go back in time, you find out that all the way to the 18th century, yeah, 18th century, you had uh, the French, right? Uh, Laplace was one. Um, I can't remember the other guy, but I'll get his name here. You know, I'll give it to you in a second. But the uh, Mont Montpertuis, I think, was the other one. It turns out that these two guys already talked about impacts. They already thought about it. So the impact theory has been around for 200, over 200 years. So what did Alvarez discover? What did he invent? Well, it turns out all he presented was evidence, numbers. That's what the mathematicians want to hear, and that's what they got, and that's why he, you know, Alvarez became a king in uh, paleontology, because... That's what the mathematicians call science, you know, the numbers, not the mechanism. And we don't care about your stupid equations, about your measurements. We want to know what the mechanism was that killed the dinosaurs. How did the asteroid, you know, distinguish between the old species and the new species? The dinosaurs were the old species. The new species were the mammals. These were big. These guys are small, right? Uh, how did the plants disappear? Okay, how did the uh, conifers disappear? Why were they taken over uh, by the uh, angiosperms? You got to explain all that. You can't say an asteroid did that. Makes no sense whatsoever. And so, yeah, that's what we have. Okay, on the other side, we have uh, Dewey. We had Louis. Okay, now, now we go with Dewey. Dewey really wrote a paper two years before... Um, Alvarez, uh, 1978, and this is a paper from 1985, seven years later, five years after he was beaten up, right? And this is what uh, Dewey says. He says, look, CO2, accumulation in the atmosphere, that's one of the things that he proposes, right? This in turn triggers chemical changes in the mixed layer. Uh, climatic warming, I heard about that, you know, climate change, right? Perturbation of the carbon cycle. Deccan tract volcanism, elevated rate of mantle CO2 release, okay, and uh, carbon dioxide, right? Tertiary drop in oxygen 18. So, so what is he saying? He's saying, look, oh, then uh, the last one there, the pH change, you know, he, he changed the waters, the, 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 you know, the taste of the waters, I guess, right? So they have all the, or the acidity, right? So the, the issue here is that these people uh, are proposing that uh, climate change, that the gases change in the air, or the waters change, they became more acidic or, or whatever, or maybe a combination of all of them. And again, uh, you cannot explain with that selectivity, which is the only thing they have to explain. Okay? If the lava covered the land, it killed everything. So first they have to say, explain why animals... Uh, on the other side of the planet, how did they die? You know, how was the selectivity there done by, you know, these uh, uh, lava that came from over here? And they say, well, okay, it was the change the atmosphere, change the climate. Okay, so why did some survive? Why did some others did not? You know, and, and so you have to explain that selectivity. And more so, I mean, th these are very intelligent volcanoes because, you know, in every instance, for, especially in the Permian, which is more or less they have the same... Uh, mechanism, you know, uh, volcanism, um, they, um, what they never are able to explain, and in every case you have the same situation, the old species died, they never realized this, and the new species, the one that came much later, those are the ones that survived. So all these uh, catastrophes, or whatever you want to call them, uh, they suffer of the same problem, that they have all these mechanism, asteroids, uh, um, what is it, um, vol volcanoes, etc., or plumes coming out of the ground and all these other mechanisms that they invent, and all of them, not a single one can tell you selectivity, can explain selectivity, especially chronological selectivity, why the old species that were about to die anyways, why they died, and why the new species which were supposed to continue rolling, why they continued to thrive. Okay, so this is the issue.
Okay. Okay, and uh, the, the uh, baton for um, this fellow Dewey is carried out today by this lady. Uh, her name is uh, Gerda Keller, and that's her uh, on the right there. She's the one on the right, by the way, <laughs> the far right, okay, just in case. Okay, and uh, she's the one that uh, continues with the baton, and uh, just like Dewey, she is ridiculed even to this day for proposing volcanism, which, if anything, um, is a little better than the asteroid theory, but, you know, both of them are nonsense. Uh, there's no way you can explain the extinction of the dinosaurs with any of these catastrophic uh, acts, um, agents, okay? So this is where the problem is. Uh, and again, let me just uh, analyze uh, the asteroid one so that you can see what the problem is with what these people are saying. Okay, here's the asteroid strike, okay? And the asteroid comes to Earth, hits us, and there it is, you know, and it hits the Yucatan, uh, the Chicxulub, um, uh, what is known as the Chicxulub uh, crater. Uh, allegedly, this is what it looks like, okay, when it hit. There you see the crater on the left, there you see it on the map on the right, okay? And uh, by the way, you know, uh, I was in a conference in uh, the Czech Republic and some Mexicans came over and they were looking at this because uh, they were part of uh, tourism uh, for their country. And they said, look, yeah, we're, we're trying to promote the Chicxulub uh, crater so that, you know, tourists come over there and we're trying to build it up. So, you know, they want to create it into a tourist site and they're going to take them by boats to see the crater or maybe, you know, go underwater, who knows. And, you know, I told them, you know, the crater has absolutely, first of all, that's not a, a, a strike, an asteroid strike, and that's a long story for me to explain. But uh, that's the, the first issue. But the second issue, it's got nothing to do with the extinction of the dinosaurs. Absolutely not. Okay, um, so what killed the, <laughs> the uh, dinosaur? Yeah, we, we want to know. Well, for sure it wasn't this, because here you see what the asteroid does to the Earth according to these people. This is the official version, by the way, okay? Here's the Earth. It got hit by this asteroid, and the whole Earth is burning. Everything died. The, the Earth became a cinder. The whole surface became a, like a cinder. That's, that's, the, that's the official version, okay? So uh, you say, well, if everything died, uh, why are we around today? Why are mammals around? How did they survive? You know, what did they, I mean, forget about eating. I mean, they weren't burned. They weren't uh, drowned by tsunamis and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, how did they survive? How did the animals underwater, you know, the reptiles, the big reptiles like Moses, ours, and so on, they, they died. They disappeared. And the fish remained. Uh, they say snakes survived, turtles survived, some crocs survived. You know, some of these animals survived. And how come, how did they kill only the, the reptiles and the reptiles in the air? The birds survived, but the reptiles, the flying reptiles, I, you know, um, uh, what is it, uh, Quetzalcoatl, uh, he survived. <laughs> I mean, he died, but all the uh, birds uh, survived. So how does the asteroid do that? I mean, this is a quite intelligent asteroid. And so, yeah, the way, um, the way we show that it's nonsense, what all these people are proposing, is uh, with a little graph. Okay, this graph, I've shown it in the past. I'll show it one more time. So please do not yawn. <laughs> Here it goes. Okay, this is the Cretaceous Terrestrial Revolution. It took four years to build this graph, okay, by uh, people who went over the records. And what you see there is what happened in the last, uh, you could say, almost 80 million years of the Cretaceous period. And what you see is the angiosperms muscled all the other uh, types of plants aside, specifically the cycads. The cycads were the ones who, that were ruling the planet at that point, especially um, uh, together with the conifers, right? Uh, uh, cycads are conifers, but I mean with other conifers. And uh, what happened was th this vegetation disappeared. It not disappeared completely in, in every instance, but uh, you can see the forests and jungles were disappearing. And they were being taken over by the angiosperms. The angiosperms not, were taken over the land. That's what was happening. Who ate angiosperms? Mammals. Who ate conifers? Well, they say that... Um, 
Uh, dinosaurs also ate angiosperms and ferns and all this stuff. No, no way, no possible way. And I'll tell you why. You know, there's no way that I don't. You know, I don't need evidence. They, they say get some evidence, Bill. No, we don't need evidence for this. This is very simple. And here, let me show it to you. Uh, in fact, I think I have it here. Okay, there it is. Uh, and that's at the bottom. Um, for every age, you had a certain type of plant. And the animals that um, developed, developed with respect to those plants. That was their food source. So if you go to the Permian, uh, you'll find uh, maybe the Glossopteris. Uh, if you go to the Triassic, you'll find uh, Dichrodiums. And these were uh, seed ferns. Okay, so the seed ferns what, is what these animals ate, and there were no angiosperms at the time. Uh, the gymnosperms were, were just being born, and so in those days they had really no, for all practical purposes, they had no gymnosperms and they had no angiosperms. All they had was these seed ferns and some non-vascular and early vascular plants. That's all they had, okay? So every age has a type of plant, and the animals... Uh, especially the herbivores, they have no other choice but to eat with or develop with the plants that they have underneath their feet. Okay, what happened when these plants disappear? Guess what? The animals disappear, the herbivores disappear, and with them, the carnivores. And you see the same pattern in each one of these major ages. You go to Jurassic, okay, and you had again the, the uh, conifers and especially the uh, cycads and cycad likes, the Williamsonians and so on. They had all these uh, plants that they ate. And when those plants disappeared at the end of the Cretaceous, guess what? You know, the dinosaurs disappeared because that's what they ate. Dinosaurs did not eat. At least uh, maybe there was one animal out there that ate it, I don't know. But, uh, you know, when you develop with a certain type of plant, you don't change overnight and say, well, I think I'm going to eat angiosperms today instead of conifers. It doesn't work that way. You know, try feeding um, pine trees to a rabbit. See, see if he likes it. And you say, well, a plant is a plant is a plant, isn't it? No, it ain't. You can't feed ferns to, to a mammal, okay? And uh, you can't feed conifers to a mammal. Mammals were born with angiosperms. And the day the angiosperms go away, mammals will go away. And there you see the graphs at the top of the um, pyramids. Uh, in the case of a background extinction, uh, which we define as the disappearance of one species, whereas a max ex mass extinction is the disappearing of an entire food chain. And as you can see, I've highlighted the word food. Okay, that's what a mass extinction is. It has to do with food. When food disappears, that uh, order or that family or whatever disappears with it. And there you see what happened. Uh, you have the overturning of the ecological pyramid for a mass extinction. And because it overturns, uh, that's why the animals die. Why does it overturn? Well, you can see it there on the left. Uh, the green pyramids, they're, uh, for the plants, that's what overturns. What overturns is the, is the um, uh, uh, population pyramid of the plants, and that happens naturally. You don't need a, uh, you don't need a catastrophe like an a uh, asteroid or volcanoes or anything like that. All you need is uh, time, and over time, the plants lose uh, uh, genetic diversity, and at some point, uh, they, their pyramids overturn, and they are taken over by more vibrant plants. The gymnosperms replaced the seed ferns. They disappeared completely at the end of the Triassic. And then the angiosperm uh, made the gymnosperms essentially disappear, especially the cycads. We don't have cycads today. I think all you have is ginkgos, uh, bilobas. That's the only uh, an 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 uh, ancient plant that survives from that age. All the other, the cycads, the cycad like they disappeared. Okay? So when those plants disappeared, guess what happened to the dinosaurs? They disappeared. What happens uh, uh, is, is that the uh, population pyramid of the plant overturns. When that happens, the animals that depended on that source of food cannot change overnight. Rabbits don't start eating, you know, pine trees because they have, no, you know, no angiosperms to eat. It doesn't happen. They don't go from lettuce to pine leaves. It doesn't happen. Okay, um, and here's a, just an example, okay, uh, here you have the Mosasaurs uh, at the end of the Cretaceous, and they ate ammonites, um, which ate uh, plankton, and when the plankton disappeared, especially the big ones, they were replaced by smaller ones, which apparently uh, were not 
so tasteful for the Ammonites. The Ammonites no longer uh, ate those uh, the the new uh, planktons, and so they disappeared in the mosasaurs with them. So this food chain, this just an example, okay, disappeared because of that, because one depended on the other. Again, a mass extinction has to do with the disappearance of a food chain. And that's why we need to define these terms. We need to define what a background extinction is. And you go to the Wikipedia, and what do you find? They say, uh, you look for background extinction, it gives you the background extinction rate, a mathematical concept, nonsense from the mathematical establishment. They tell you how many species disappeared in the background. They look at numbers. We don't care. We want to know why. What caused the disappearance of a given species at a different point in time? And for that, you have to explain the disappearance of one species. How did Mother Nature target a single species, like, for example, the Neanderthals, kill them and leave everybody alive? That's what you got to explain. Okay? And that's what these people cannot explain. They never were able to explain extinction, whether background or uh, uh, mass extinction. Here we do. We have an explanation. And not only we can explain it, we say we go one step further and say it's a foolproof mechanism. Okay? There's no way to avoid it. Humans are going to die because in a mass extinction, not in a background extinction. We're going to die with all the mammals. Okay? Because we're going to take care of them before we die. We're going to kill every animal that we can find. Okay? But we're going to disappear. Why? Because of an asteroid or because, you know, God said so in the Bible or because, you know, volcanoes absolute, or, or maybe even a uh, supernova, as they say. No, none of those agents have anything to do with extinction. We're going to die because our population pyramid, the uh, population pyramid of our plants are going to overturn. Okay. Why? Because we create our own food. And the only reason we do so is because of money. So uh, all uh, mass extinctions ultimately are economic uh, problems, are caused by economics. All animals have economics. All animals manage a single resource, which is food. When that food disappears, the animal no longer has anything to manage. And right now, we make our own food. Okay? Without food, we all die here on planet Earth. Why do we produce food and distribute it? Because of money. When the economy of the world collapses, we're all dead because nobody will produce food or distribute it to the cities. And we have all these people in the cities, millions of people, and they depend on someone bringing a golden spoon and feeding them. So all mass extinctions are related to food. We will die. Why? Because food will run out. Why? Because our economic system will collapse. We cannot grow forever economically, especially when the population doesn't grow anymore.